It has been my experience, um, which grows ever more strongly, that not only can one be, be equally committed to science and spirituality, but you really can't do one without the other in order to do justice to either. And what I find truly remarkable is that science, rather than taking away spirituality, is actually taking us closer to spirituality. And spirituality, rather than competing with science, is actually helping to bring science and allow science to see what's really there. If I'm going to look at the question of consciousness, I want to look at what the basis of the word consciousness is, which is to know. And it comes the same basis of science. In fact, science comes from that same quality. So it's an interesting idea that consciousness and science actually come from the sense of knowing. And just Leo will do fine for now. I also hold a degree in international economics from a Russian business school, and then a master's degree in natural resources management from Indiana University, Bloomington. On the consciousness side, for the past four years, I've been involved with uh, translating and publishing in this country the English version of uh, the books by Russian author Vladimir Megre, Anastasia, and the Ringing Cedars series. I am the editor of the English version of Down this book. Earth Dimensions of Spirituality. Indeed, our concept of spirituality today is for the most part very far removed from Mother Earth. Of course, we have the shamanic tradition and many other traditions which do see spirituality as being closely linked with the natural world, but these traditions for the most part do not make uh, part of everyday experiences of people in the Western civilized world. And before our policies with regard to the land will really be changed, there will have to be a great deal of philosophical, not to say religious, change. Indeed, this is something that we badly need today. We need to come up with a new vision. Many a spiritual thinker over the course of human history have been uh, teaching that the natural world produces a very powerful influence on our bodies. Today, however, we have practices that confirm that we can affect physically the plant and animal world very significantly by introducing very small amounts of substances into the natural ecosystem. Biodynamic farming based uh, on uh, the ideas of Rudolf Steiner prescribe the application of very small amount of preparations, sometimes a teaspoon to an acre, to promote the absorption of cosmic energies by the plants and stimulate their growth. And these biodynamic practices have so been so productive and so disease-free that today the scientific research turns its uh, attention to the study of just why these practices can be so productive. So we know that there is the influence we exercise on the plant world. Cannot we see a loop here, a cycle? What would be the result of our maintaining a dire direct link with the living to nature? Imbue the seeds with the information about what your body needs. So she recommends holding the seeds in your mouth under your tongue for nine minutes before planting so that your saliva can permeate the plant and can convey through the bacteria of which saliva is full the information on your physical state of uh, being today in the, the moment you are planting the seed. 